Hey, what's up everybody? Russ with RWG Research here. How's it going? Uh, yeah, let's work on the tool end for the uh, new CNC coil winder automated uh, controlled tool end. So, really quickly, try to make this as fast as possible, but these videos seem to drag out. So, right now, this is my current configuration. As we've seen in the other videos, this just follows. It has a hole all the way down through the middle of it, and the axis just rotates and also has a spring so it can move up and down. This way I can push it down onto wherever I'm growling and I can cam follow any direction that I'm traveling for the most part. It does give me some fits which is why we're making uh, a new version. So the first thing we have to pay attention to is the the wire placement here is actually offset from the center. So the center is like right at the beginning of this roller and the lay down point is after. That means anywhere this thing follows is not in the center point where I've programmed it. It's actually behind it. So I want to fix that. And in order to do that I have to control it with a little motor. So in the last video we controlled this stepper motor, rewired it and controlled it. Works great. Now we got to integrate it into this. So we have a couple of options. First of all I still need the tool end to go up and down. On this one I have a spring and I still want to be able to have that tool end go up and down like this but in order to do that and make contact with the motor we'd have to have a meshing gear system or move the um, the motor at the same time as we're moving the tool end. Um, also in this I'm going to instead of use a spring I'm going to try to use some magnets. So first of all we have to figure out how to mount this in a better positioning so we can get this thing to do what we want. We want to be able to turn this motor and turn the head and move it up and down. So I gotta build some slide rail systems. And I looked to find some precision slide bearings this small and they're ridiculously expensive. So the next best thing is just to use bushings, which is actually what I've used here. This came directly off of some old printer. It was a big old uh, printer with a giant print head on it. Um, one of the, uh, I forget what they're called, dot matrix printer print heads. So it's a big one. Um, and so that worked great, but what else can we use? So the next best thing is to grab a CD drive and these are very similar. This is basically the same type of carriage that's on here as on there. However, a lot of these don't have bushings. So this one just has plastic only. Uh, this, this one has bushings. Okay, It's metal and it's got bushings on there. They're hard to see right there. But this casing is metal which is even better. Uh, this one also has bushings on it, so those are good. This one has bushings, so I got three with bushings. This is plastic, so two with plastic and three with bushings. But these are all different. They're going to be really hard to use. So the next best thing is to just make my own custom slide rail. So for that, we're going to jump over to what kind of boxes I've been digging through to find the parts I need. So the next box I grabbed was actually some hard drives. So real quickly, if you've never seen inside a hard drive, this one's been taken apart already. But basically you have the uh, the disc here, and then you have the read heads which come out and read the heads. Ooh. Oh, that's ruining it. Anyway, this right here has a... Well, both of these points have bearings on them which I could be useful for something. This one even looks like it has a hole and there's a screw in the bottom that holds it on. So that's pretty cool. So grab my box of stuff and uh, I'll give you a, a big example here, okay? Yeah, this is a big drive. So it's probably only like, I don't know, some amount of megabytes. But point is, is that this has got a drive motor in it, so it's on a spindle and it could be used for something. But actually what I found to be even more useful, well, if I can get it out of there, Okay, so what I found to be more useful here is actually this part. Yeah, this is a giant, giant reed head. Look how big these heads are on this thing. It's ridiculous. Anyway, I'm interested in this part. So with a screw, a set screw somewhere, this one looks like it's clamped together, but the small ones just uh, are usually a set screw or sometimes you have to press them out. But this spindle goes all the way through. And uh, some of these actually have holes that go all the way through, which would be really helpful for the center axis, so we don't have to try to drill a hole through a precision shaft, but the hole is already there, manufactured that way. So I'm going to be using smaller versions of these, and uh, let me show you what I got there. But real quickly, I've taken apart a few hard drives in my days. These are the ones that made it through my childhood days of throwing these suckers. And some of these discs, um, like this, that come out of server drives, 
Some of them are actually metal, aluminum. You can see this one has been bent to crap. Look at that, pretty messed up. Uh, and some of them are actually glass. So this is a 10,000 RPM uh, server hard drive. You can see how much smaller it is. And to prove that they're glass, you can see right through this one. I've actually taken this one and high voltage the uh, uh, metallic, whatever it is, right off the surface. <laughs> Anyway, so they're kind of cool. Some of these are glass, so you gotta be careful with some of these, but rarely are they glass. Usually just server stuff and high expensive stuff. I think these are all metal here. Yeah, you can see how it's all scratched up. But like this one's glass. Well, maybe not. Well, this one is definitely glass. Oh yeah, totally different. Anyway, all right, let's go to the next station where I've got all the crap laid out I've been digging through. So digging through some of my precision bearings here. Uh, these are kind of the bigger stuff. Here's all like the smaller stuff, but we're actually going to go over there and talk about the tiny, tiny stuff. All right, like I said, I've taken apart a few, uh, a few hard drives in my days. These rings are really annoying, but they're a lot of fun. Anyway, don't give those to your kids. They'll annoy the crap out of you. So believe it or not, these are actually the ones that I used on the 3D printing rails. So the homemade rails and bushings uh, that go on the rails, the little rollers, this is actually what I used. So I have quite a few of these that are all identical. These came out of identical server hard drives. So all of these that are empty are, are identical pairs. And um, I use those on those rollers. I actually have enough to do probably a whole nother set. So I'm probably going to use those because I've got so many. However, uh, I found this one for possibly the center spindle. And the reason I like it is because it's got a hole all the way through it. Right down the middle there. It's even threaded. I don't know if that's good or bad. But i got to have a place to run my wire through. So I could use this aluminum block and mount the... Um, mount this onto my slide rail that I'm going to be building and this could be my my spindle. So the spindle is going to move all at once, the motor is going to move all at once, those two will be tied together with a belt or gear or something and then I'm gonna to have to take some rollers like this and uh, take some aluminum you know and actually like make a, uh, a slide rail so that this thing goes up and down pretend like the spindle was here and the, there's a bearing on this side there's a bearing on this side and actually making a precision slide rail unfortunately that seems like the best option because I've got the things to do it I'll have to just machine everything and make it precise and make it work but let's get started on that and see what we come up with all right boys and girls well now that I've brought you through sort of what happens to me sometimes when I'm trying to build something I don't always get online and start finding parts or pieces and looking for things to build something I usually dig through all of my parts that I have here and decide what can I do with what I have and then do I need to buy anything else and can I afford it those are usually my uh, questions so what I've got drawn here is my design up here in the top. These two pieces, this one and this one, these are sort of the designs I went through. Um, I could make a plate and if I put two bearings like this to act, um, or, or I could put bearings square, like a square, so I'd have two on each side and one on the edge to, to make up. So that's one, two, three, four, five on one side. So then I thought, well, how can I reduce the amount of bearings? And I thought, well, I could angle some like this and potentially lose one that way. And then looking at this, uh, the next idea is to make something with a V in it. Uh, these are the rollers here. This is the rollers here at an angle looking from the top. And from the side, the rollers are like this. So the plate would just have an angle piece on it. Uh, maybe plastic, uh, I could put a plastic roller on here or something, and come up with a design that looks like this, where the shaft is hanging off one side, the motor is hanging off the other side, and the belt goes through the middle of the plate, and then the shaft will be fixed, and that way the whole entire plate can move up and down, and then uh, and then here, uh, you know, this belt will drive the rotational of the uh, the head. Now. This is like largely cumbersome. So the bearings I got, the pieces I got, this is going to start adding a lot of weight. It's going to start being heavy. So I thought, okay, this is probably not the method I should choose. So the next method I thought is like, what if I could fix a gear where it wouldn't move and then the shaft would spin through it and it would slide up and down. This is very similar to the same thing as what is in your drill press, all right? That type of sleeve connection where there's a connection point somewhere, but it moves in a circle 
and it's all together and it moves up and down and this allows you to rotate the spindle with the belt on it in one position just like I want to do here but move the center shaft up and down that's also a bit cumbersome that to build something like that is going to be very challenging now I could possibly find something that would do the job and purchase it however I kept thinking and came up with a design that looks like this so it's basically the exact same thing that I already have the only difference is that I'm going to basically pretend like there's a gear that could be fit in the middle of this between these two bushings. So I'd have a uh, bushing and a bushing where this would still slide up and down and it would still rotate 360 and then I would affix a gear on it like this that would be a long gear and it'd be affixed to the shaft so it could move up and down. Then I'd have the stepper motor and another gear of the same, uh, preferably the same size, same amount of teeth. Um, connected to this shaft so these two are tied together with a one-to-one -one gear this gear would be small and it would just be stationary and then this one would slip up and down so I grabbed my uh, box of shafts and pieces and parts and I found a little bin full of uh, gears so I'm pretty sure Blaine sent this to me a long time ago um, I usually don't keep gears like this uh, when I take stuff apart I just keep the, the bigger stuff but he kept all the small stuff so I found a couple of gears that would probably work. Something like this is what I want. All right, so this gear, and let's pretend another gear like this, all right, without the center piece. Um, this piece would be allowed to move up and down while this one was affixed to a plate or something. And then no matter where it's at, it's always allowed to rotate, whether it's on the bottom, whether it be on the top, it doesn't matter. And so this can move up and down freely. Okay, so pretend like uh, this big fat gear here was attached to the shaft. And then obviously this isn't the same size, but another gear would be affixed to the motor like this. And then, um, and then this would just move. Let's see if I can hold all this. This would just move. Oh, I am so far out of the camera. So this would just move like this. All right, up and down, and I cannot hold anything straight. But this would just move up and down like this, and the other gear would be affixed, and it would never um, miss a tooth, and it wouldn't really have any friction whatsoever there, but it would also hold very tight. So just the gears laying on the table here, I'm going to try to engineer something with just this. I was hoping to also just go ahead and use this same piece right here, but uh, I'm not sure if that's going to happen. Drilling a hole through a small shaft is actually really kind of challenging. So I found some really cool sleeve bearing things for pretty cheap, but I can only get one and the shaft is probably hardened and it's probably a perfect fit. So to drill through a, like a five millimeter shaft or even a 10 millimeter shaft, which is uh, this is probably like an eight millimeter or something. It's going to be really challenging with a hardened shaft. So this is what I have that works really well so far. So I'm going to attempt to integrate some of these gears and the stuff into this. So yeah, again, I'm just kind of showing you the design process that I go through sometimes. Now you might have thought, well, why don't you just ask yourself this first? And it's hard to do because I don't know what kind of parts I have laying around. Um, so for instance, you know, like I said, I dug through, uh, dug through this bin right here, all right, which has a lot of just pieces and parts and things and stuff. I mean, there's all kinds of things here. You never know what you're going to have available to yourself. Like, look, here's a little clutch, electronic clutch on this guy, you know, all kinds of different things. So it's really, really hard to just, you know, randomly, uh, you know, tell yourself to sit down and start building something. Uh, even in a CAD drawing until you really know what you have available to you. So this is, like I said, the process I go through usually and I thought I'd share it with you because it is kind of interesting. So we're going to just kind of see what we can come up with here and uh, continue this video. Uh, it sounds like this video might be a couple parts because uh, this is a challenging thing to build but I think it's worth showing you every step, showing you uh, my failed attempts which is what I, basically what I've done with digging through all my bearings and finding all my hard drive parts that is probably going to be a failed attempt. Uh, I want to keep the weight down on the end effector so it can move at whatever rate I want it to move so in order to do that I gotta simplify my design which honestly I would go with something like this but that actually forces me to add a few extra pieces this is the simplest design and as long as it does what I want I'm all good. Alright, let's see what I can come up with
So now we've got our home sensor built into this thing. So uh, I adjusted this so that there's basically no uh, no free play between the gears, but this thing still moves nice and free just as expected. And uh, the next step in the process actually is